been spraying some sprays on this. I have used um, Tangerine Dreams, the Dilutions, the um, Didi Martini, Pure Sunshine, and the darker one is the Chop Pesto. Um, these two, the Tangerine Dream and the Chop Pesto, are a couple of new colours that have come in the Dilutions range. Then I actually put um, Liquid X clear gesso over the top and smooched it together and the clear gesso has mingled with a little of the paint so that a little of the sprays so that you get these streaks running through it. But just a little experiment to show you the difference. This is the white gesso on a colour. Obviously it goes nice and white. Now this is your clear gesso, and when it goes on it will appear white, um, but I'll show you when it dries. That it will clear out. I've done it on a bit of black, black card here, really make them um, go so they're not quite dry yet. You can see this has got a hasn't got the white appearance that this has so this should clear out completely with just kind of a it's it's really quite a rough surface and it has a little, it's not like it's pure clear like if you were using a fast fast finished um, bond on something and what I'm doing here is to create I want to create layers between my different my different work so I put it when you put your gesso down and you spray over top of it, you get all those pastel effects. I'm going to create some leaves on here on, this, on the second layer using Archiver Links and Olive, Jet Black, Saffron and Russet. Or Sienna is another one you can use. archive a link to create a combination of dark leaves in the background and now I'm going to use distress paints to give those same leaves some definition. I'm using peel paint, I'll probably mix in a bit of shabby shutters and I forget to shake these out well otherwise that one wasn't shaken and I'm going to use some squeezed lemonade just to create a little definition on the leaves and also with my layers I know that um, the distress paint is going to actually dry and act as a resist as opposed to um, using something that's too water based you don't have to be too particular if you go over the edge well so what because this is not our finished layer. The texture will also catch on some of this gesso from underneath where we've created texture by closing the book and scratching all that gesso up together. I'm going to go in and use my um, Faber Castell Mix and Match Stampers Big Brush Pens which have got an in there ink in them and just give these a little bit of defini definition uh, nothing much because there's going to be all sorts happening over the top Drawing some of this picket fence now. You can see what I'm doing is not exactly challenging and it's 
not meant to be perfect and I'm using an old brush that's all scratchy and yucky and not particularly accurate. I'm just putting a little definition in there because I just want this kind of muted a little bit. I don't, I'm just playing. I haven't got a plan here. I won't be doing the shading correctly. I'll just let it take care of itself. And I've decided I'm going to put some fast finish over this before I do the alcohol layer. Um, that's going to create another seal on top of there. Some of that I'm not sure. Some of this indie ink might move. It might move a little bit. Um, some of, but I hope not. Um, the paint shouldn't move. So I'll dry this really well and then I'll put a sealing coat, a fast finish right over the top before I put the alcohol ink on and rely on the alcohol ink to do some top layers. No, I'm not worried. Normally I'd use fast finish to um, seal and have beautiful shine. I'm not worried about if I get bubbles or anything on this because, you know, I like texture in my pages. So if it gets bubbles, I know it gets bubbles from that. What I'm... Um, interested in is getting that seal on there so I can play with my alcohol inks on top. Okay, I'm going to bring some alcohol inks over the top of this, see what we end up with. Um, it should run into some of these cre crevices and creases here and make some interesting looks. If I don't like them, I'll just take them out using um, an ink blending tool with felt on it. So we'll start, I'm going to use Tim Holtz and um, Ranger's new colours. They've got Indigo, Honeycomb, a Poppy Field, Teakwood, uh, Botanical and Mermaid. some of his old colours as well. This one is Sunshine. Sunshine Yellow. Now don't worry that this is drying. I am actually going to activate some of it with um, alcohol blending solution. And remember, if none of this turns out how you want it, you can just remove most of it with your blending solution as well. So you don't have to be afraid if you don't like something you see. The alcohol inks are translucent, so they tend to you tend to be able to see through them unless you really make them thick, which you can do. When you use cloths like this to put alcohol ink on, um, don't throw them away because you can reactivate that ink, that ink on there because all this is is pigment um, suspended into alcohol. So when you put alcohol blending solution or any rubbing alcohol into it, you can activate it again, which means you can, for instance, um, put some on there again. this here somewhere on a bank page. You can do all sorts of things and um, with it and you can even insert the cloth into your work which is kind of cool. So don't throw your bit of cloth away or your sponge or even your felt if you're using uh, one of the blending felts. You can even use it to shape and colour or do whatever you, whatever you like. Um, I'll probably use this exact same piece of cloth in here to create something and end up having to put it on another one to make 
to do something else. So I'm not on that. I'm going to have to do it on this page here. And with, you can see one because I've sealed it. This is actually the back page here. Um, none of that alcohol has come through. The only places it will have seeped is on the edges here where it's come through and drawn over. So if you seal your page, the other good thing is you can doing this sort of thing you usually gets you excited about making something else. And I haven't sealed this page. So you can see this is what happens when you, even though I'm only using just lightly, it'll come right through onto the next page. So I'll probably make a background out of this and then seal it. This is a crafter's workshop stencil called, I would have had to pull out, Mini Live Love. You can also get it in a large size, which the large size is generally the one I enjoy the most, but this one fits in here quite nicely. I'm using archival ink here so that this does not, it will stay over top of everything I put it on, put on it, sorry. Clean this up with the rubbing alcohol or stays on stamp cleaner because it's archival. I've decided I did want to clean up around the edges of this just to give it a bit of a highlight. Now I could, do, I should have done it before when I thought I was going to and then put this over the top. If I mess it up I'll just take it all away and do it again. I've got to try and avoid the archival because it'll come off with this yeah, as well to try and I'll probably go over that with a little glossy accents later so I've even got more punch because this is a very rich page as usual I like those nice rich colors but there's something else I'm going to do I have a lot of cotton but I like to use it in my work sometimes I'm not going to put these in there I was considering it at one stage but it wasn't the right look um, I make flowers, just flowers randomly, colour them and they've got a bit of texture to them just by winding the cottons together. Um, you can see how I chose colours for this one if I wanted to put it round um, that went with the, the particular page I was making. But that's a fun thing to do if you happen to have lots of cotton. There's lots of ways you can use cotton in your art journaling and I think because this whole thing's got a viney kind of a look I'm going to use some of those colours again, uh, which are yeah, oranges and yellows. Now the reason why I use the cottons this way because these are these cottons are many many years old, and they I don't think they'd stand up to actually sewing. I think they'd be weak, but we can put them in our work, and I'll probably just use fast finish and I'll do a whole twirly thing. Um, right around to frame this whole piece and just fast finish it in. You can shave them, you can cut them and, and make little shavings. Often when I make flowers just by gluing them together I get lots of hairy bits and what have you and I just keep them and throw them into pages and throw them onto canvas and, and play. So if you've got lots of cottons out there, um, even if you want to buy a little cotton it doesn't take very much it, it's that's really fun and easy to manipulate on your page when it's wet so I'm going to go around the edges with the cotton something from one of his new stamp sets kind of like having quite a big one in there but then we could have a couple of swallows not sure we'll see and I have got a crafters workshop stencil that has birds flying on it and I might put a little that in the sky just to give it a bit of movement.
dimming this Tim Holtz bird up. I'm doing it with an archival because I want to colour it. It doesn't matter if it goes on this piece of paper straight or crooked or because I'm just going to cut it out once I've coloured it. Colouring stamping is so easy. You don't have to really know what you're doing. Um, the stamp has all the shadings in it, so you don't have to worry about that. About the only thing I recommend you do is that you put a little white dot on the eye to make it appear alive, otherwise it'll just be nice and flat and not look very good. I use Distress Inks to colour this and I'll have my water pen with me as well and I like to use the cut and dry nibs when I want really positive colour. It's just like using a pen. This is one of the reasons why I've never invested in, this, in Tim Holtz pens yet because I've always just coloured this way and liked it because I've got all the colours in the stamps. What I'm going to do is fussy cut that, put, maybe put a little detail in with a bit of glossy accents or texture and cut it out ready to go into my project. Okay, we're on our final piece. I've made the bird. I've put a little bit of glossy accents on there. Now I've gone around, put around the edges some um, uh, Wonder Tape and I am going to use wet glue to glue this down. But I wanted a little bit of dimension in there so I have put some dimensional I actually use these uh, the 3D foam squares and because I, I want to build up where the actual wing is just a little so it's not a lot of dimension but just gives it a little bit of extra something this is all glued in if you have any trouble with it lifting you can just put a little matte medium over the top or something um, I've actually used fast finish decoupage over it because it made it easy for me to put round. I've put a few birds in the sky and that's how I'm going to leave this one for now um, until I decide something else to do. So I'll stick that in and I'll take some photos.